Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we have another mock draft. This time we're doing a 12-teamer standard, our first standard mock draft of the season, but I know some people do like standard leagues and do a lot of standard leagues, so we are going to be doing a standard draft. We're going to be doing a lot over the offseason, definitely more PPR and a half PPR mock drafts, but standard is still fairly popular amongst many people. So we're going to be doing some standard mock drafts. This one is going to be a 10 team third overall pick standard mock draft. Thanks to Evan Rogers, he left a comment in one of my other videos. It was the 12 team second pick mock draft, PPR scoring, of course. So thank you to him. Shout out to him. Um, he let me know what he wanted to do. So I think from now on, whenever you guys let me know what draft settings you want me to do, like for example, 12 team half PPR from the eighth pick, whenever you guys let me know what you want to see me do once I release that video, I'll give you guys a shout out for those of you who requested that video. So win win, you know, you get you get the video and you also get a little shout out, which is always cool. So yeah, shout out to Evan Rogers. He requested this video and we're bringing it to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy this mock draft and let's get right into it. All right, so Christian McCaffrey goes first overall. Saquon goes second. Very, very standard. We should expect that. Sometimes in standard scoring, Saquon does go ahead of Christian McCaffrey, but you can argue for either of them. But we're at the third overall pick. So we have a tough decision here. Obviously, not going to go with a quarterback, wide receiver, or a tight end. We have to stay with the running backs, especially in standard scoring. You cannot argue taking a receiver here. So, for me, now that Dalvin Cook is threatening to hold out, when you combine that with the fact that he does have an extensive injury history, I do not want him at this pick at all. For me, I have a very, very defined second tier of players in standard scoring, and that is Kamara, Henry, and Zeke. You have two very similar players, Henry and Zeke, who are in maybe not super, super elite and fast-paced and pass-friendly offenses, but that's very good, especially for standard scoring. So these guys are just workhorses. They're going to get around 300 carries, if not more. Not no targets, but not a ton. Although Zeke has been getting more targets recently, and he actually does get a lot of receptions now. He is certainly a candidate to get 60, 65 receptions, but Derrick Henry will likely get more carries. So it does kind of even out. You can make an argument for either one there. And then there's Kamara, who has arguably a higher touchdown ceiling than any other running back in all of fantasy football on a stellar New Orleans offense. And while he's not gonna have as many carries as Henry or Zeke, he is going to have that receiving upside, which, yes, isn't as valuable in standard scoring just because the receptions don't matter technically. But you have to remember that that correlates into more receiving yards, which obviously is still valuable in standard scoring and still matters. So between these three guys, you really can make an argument for any of them. You can clearly talk about any of these three guys and make a very, very strong point as to why they are deserving of the third overall pick. I strongly define this second tier of running backs with Kamara, Henry, Zeke. I don't think that there can be a debate between putting any other guys in that tier until Dalvin Cook is for sure not going to hold out. So I am going to go with Kamara just because I feel like the touchdown ceiling there is higher than any of those other two guys in Derrick Henry or Zeke. But this is one of those instances where I wouldn't even try to debate if you took Henry or Zeke. You know, I have Christian McCaffrey and Saquon in the same tier. But if you took Saquon over Christian McCaffrey, I still would maybe put up a little debate there and still point out that, yes, Saquon is great, but Christian McCaffrey can do it on the ground and through the air even better than Saquon can. But with Kamara, I'm not even going to try to debate you if you want to take Henry or Zeke. It's super, super close. 
it's really a toss up at this point, but I do favor Kamara ever so slightly. You can go either way with this pick. So now Dalvin Cook goes, Josh Jacobs goes. I'm not a fan of taking any of those guys ahead of Derrick Henry or Zeke. I think they're both phenomenal players. Dalvin Cook, once again, has some concerns about holding out and has an injury risk. Josh Jacobs, not too many concerns there, but he just doesn't have the safety that we know that Derrick Henry and Zeke has because we've seen them just be better than Josh Jacobs. We know that they're going to absolutely produce. Then Michael Thomas goes, DeAndre Hopkins goes. Not a fan of taking DeAndre Hopkins over Tyree Kill at all. Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, Tyree Kill, Lamar goes pretty early, Miles Sanders, Julio, Nick Chubb, and Devontae Adams. Really wish I got Devontae Adams there. I do think that would be a pretty good pick. I think that Devontae Adams pretty much needs to be the number two overall wide receiver in any scoring format. Because in PPR, obviously, he can get a ton of receptions, but he still is a huge touchdown machine, which is incredibly valuable in standard scoring. There is not a bigger lock when it comes to the wide receiver position for who is going to score 10 or more touchdowns than Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams is as close to a lock for double-digit touchdowns as you can get. But now it is time for us to make our pick. And just looking at wide receiver, obviously Chris Godwin is still there. And I do like Chris Godwin. Obviously, he is a reception monster. He converted an incredibly high percentage of his targets into receptions. But even then, in standard scoring, it doesn't matter. If you're putting up the yards, that's all that really matters. But at running back, Chris Carson is there who I do really, really like. I think Chris Carson is a really good player. And the thing is, Chris Carson and Chris Godwin, unfortunately, will not be there at our next pick. So it is a pretty tough decision. But looking at the other wide receivers available, you can always get guys like Robert Woods, like Calvin Ridley, like Allen Robinson, probably in the fourth round. So... I don't think that it's really worth it to take Chris Godwin right here just because the wide receiver depth later on is still pretty good. And honestly, it is kind of a reach for Chris Carson at this point. I'm not going to lie. I'm not super happy having to take Chris Carson this early. I don't really like taking him in the late second round of a 10-team mock draft. I think that is really, really early. But the thing is, I just don't see the value at wide receiver at this point. Yes, Chris Godwin is great, but I don't want to be stuck with Leonard Fournette, who had a 2019 campaign that was absolutely carried on 100 targets. So I am going to go with Chris Carson here, even though I'm not super, super happy about it. So then Travis Kelsey goes, Chris Godwin goes, Kittle, Mike Evans goes. I do really wish that one of those tight ends fell to me. Unfortunately, they didn't. So we're going to have to pass up on the tight end position at this point because there's no reason to go with Zach Ertz right here. Obviously, Chris Godwin would have been phenomenal if he fell to me, but you can't really expect Chris Godwin to be available in the third round these days. That's just, that was a last year's thing. This season, not going to happen anymore. So now just looking at the other guys available. Running back, even though I do like Austin Eckler, I do think that the receiver position, we should take a look at it. And Kenny Galladay is a pretty good standard scoring option. Kenny Galladay isn't a PPR machine. He averages upwards of 15 yards per reception in pretty much every single season. And he's also a touchdown monster. When he was playing with Matthew Stafford last season, Kenny Galladay was absolutely on fire. Guys like Amari Cooper are also pretty good, but I don't think that they're on the same level as Kenny Galladay. And then other guys like Cooper Cup and Adam Thielen are better in PPR scoring. So Kenny Galladay definitely is the move here if we're going to take a wide receiver. 
looking out running back, it is getting very, very slim. I don't really like Le'Veon Bell in a non-PPR scoring format. Same with James Conner, Melvin Gordon, I'm just not a fan of in general. If we take a running back, it will be Austin Eckler because yes, obviously, yes, he is a PPR machine because he just gets a ton of targets, but he still does get a lot of yards and a lot of touchdowns. If we look at the other running backs available, I like David Montgomery, but I'm not quite sure that he is going to be available at our next pick. If he's not available at our next pick, then I do think that that would be pretty concerning. And according to ADP, he probably shouldn't be available, but he very well still could be available. But I'm not too sure that I want to rely on that. Not to mention my other two running backs did get injured last season. And even though I'm not super concerned about them, it still is something that you need to remember. So you could easily go with Kenny Galladay here because there still is a little bit of value at running back later on. Like Darius Geis, not so much Kareem Hunt in a non-PPR scoring format, but Jonathan Taylor is all right. Ronald Jones, I do like. Some guys are okay, but I do think that the value with Austin Eckler, considering that there's not too many good receivers later on, is worth it over a guy like Kenny Galladay. So after we take Austin Eckler, Mahomes goes, James Conner goes, then Kenny Galladay falls, then we're seeing more receivers being taken. Adam Thielen, Cooper Cup both go, Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon, Leonard Fournette, then Amari Cooper and T.Y. Hilton two picks later. In between is Devin Singletary going this early in a non-PPR scoring format. Really, really bad pick there. Kenyon Drake going a lot later in standard scoring than PPR. Mark Ingram and then A.J. Brown. So... David Montgomery is here. He was really, really close to being taken. As you can see, he is the highest ranked running back, according to Sleeper, who is available. So it was very close. I didn't really want to take the risk. Obviously, now seeing that he is available, he might have been worth it to take, but I just didn't want to take any risks with running back because the receivers here are completely fine with me. Seeing that DK Metcalf is available is pretty surprising to me. I think that DK Metcalf is certainly a phenomenal pick, especially in a standard scoring league. DK Metcalf definitely fell. He should have went in the late third, early fourth round. That's what his ADP has him going around. But obviously he didn't get taken then. And I do really, really like Calvin Ridley. And I would probably take Calvin Ridley ahead of him if I had to choose between the two. But I really don't think I'm going to have to choose between the two. I do think that Calvin Ridley will be available next round, especially seeing that team one and two only have one running back each. They should take at least one running back each. So at the very worst, two receivers will go and the odds that Calvin Ridley goes is not the highest. And even if he does go, DJ Shark is still a solid player. And there are other guys who I like as well. So I'm going to take the risk and go with DK Metcalf here, just hoping that Ridley is still available at our next pick. And I think he will be. So we are going to take DK Metcalf here. After that, Marlon Mack, David Montgomery, Keenan Allen, and Tyler Lockett go. So like I said, they're going to take at least one running back each, which they did. I am a little surprised that neither of them took two running backs, but doesn't really matter because our guy, Calvin Ridley, is available. He is a huge sleeper this year. And I know a lot of people are saying, oh, he's a sleeper, he's a sleeper. And yes, a lot of times that makes a player not a sleeper when everyone's saying that they are a sleeper. That's kind of what is happening with Deontay Johnson. If you're anywhere on social media, especially on Twitter, Fantasy Football Twitter has completely hyped up Deontay Johnson to the point where he has went from like an 11th round pick to a seventh slash eighth round pick. It's crazy what Twitter can do to these ADPs, but Twitter has not hyped up Ridley enough to the point where I'm just gonna stay away from him. No, that has not happened yet. I still love Calvin Ridley, and in standard scoring through week 14, and I say through week 14 because he was out for week 15, 16, and 17. So through week 14 in standard scoring, he was the wide receiver 10, and on a points per game basis, he outscored his teammate, Julio Jones, who goes in the first and second round of pretty much all drafts. 
and on a points per game basis, he was outscored by his teammate Julio Jones, who goes in the first and second round every single time. Julio Jones outscored him on a points per game basis in standard scoring by 0.1 points. That is an incredibly low margin. It is crazy. Yet, Julio Jones always goes in the first and second round, but you can get Calvin Ridley in the third, fourth, and sometimes fifth round. Third round is a reach, but some people take it if they absolutely have to. You know, if you have an early third round pick, then you're probably not going to get him with your fifth round pick. So obviously you have to take him with your late third round pick. But nonetheless, I really, really like Calvin Ridley, and I'm super happy that he fell here. You can go with Shark, but there's just too many concerns with that offense. And we saw Calvin Ridley absolutely perform at an astonishing level last season. Yes, we saw the same thing from Shark, but... I'm just a little more confident that Ridley is going to perform because even if he isn't ready to be a wide receiver one in real life, it doesn't matter because Julio Jones is there to take that wide receiver one coverage. Calvin Ridley is just going to be sitting there. Same thing that Juju did in 2018. Antonio Brown had all the coverage. Juju gets much less and probably worse coverage and he can absolutely beast up and get a ton of fantasy points and that is what I like out of Calvin Ridley for this season. Absolutely love the pick and I really really love our start. So looking at our roster we have Kamara and Chris Carson with Austin Eckler as our flex and then DK Metcalf and Calvin Ridley. Obviously our wide receiver core could be a little better but I really think that it is completely fine and I absolutely love our start. So since our Calvin Ridley pick Two tight ends go in a row, Ertz and Andrews. Debo Samuel goes, who is injured, so I wouldn't take him this early. I did a video on his injury impact on my channel, so I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to see that video once this mock draft is done. David Johnson, Stephon Diggs, two quarterbacks in a row, Wilson and Watson. And the rest of the picks here seem pretty standard, so I think all those picks are all right. Not too many complaints there. So now it's time for our next pick. Of course, we do have some really good running backs, but you can never have too many running backs, right? So we are gonna look at the running backs available and sleepers saying that the best one is carry on Johnson, but I definitely do not agree with that. I think that Darius Geis is certainly a better pick than carry on Johnson in standard scoring for sure. Guys like Todd Gurley, people are very overhyped about in standard scoring. Yes, obviously he has some potential, but I think that Darius Geis is a really, really good pick in standard scoring because he looked incredibly talented. The only risk there is his injury. We don't know what's really going to happen. He doesn't have the best health. It hasn't seemed like that at least, but when you're in the sixth round, you're not going to get guys who don't have any concerns. And give me a guy who can finish as an RB1 if he stays healthy over a guy who's going to stay healthy but has no potential to be an RB1. So let's just take a quick look at wide receivers though. Michael Gallup and Terry McLaurin. I do really, really like them. I think that they're both great, especially in standard scoring because obviously they are very, very big playmakers and don't always get a ton of receptions. Juju and DJ Moore are obviously much better in PPR scoring than in standard scoring. Devontae Parker, I also like him a lot. Juju and DJ Moore, obviously they're going to be better in PPR scoring than in standard scoring, but there is a little glitch going on, I think. I'm pretty sure that Juju and DJ Moore are supposed to be ranked higher than this even though it's standard scoring. I'm pretty sure this is a glitch. There has been a glitch with Alvin Kamara recently, and now with these two players, it seems like. So I'm just gonna ignore them. I'm not gonna take them because they should be gone. That is what was supposed to happen. So we're just gonna ignore them. And for me, McLaurin and Gal, I really like them both. But looking at running back, I do think that Geis is a better option, especially because 
there's a solid chance that either Gallup or McLaurin is available at our next pick. It's a little risky to wait, but at the very worst, I could always go with Devontae Parker. No worries there. So we're going to go with the running back, and we're going to go with Darius Geis, who I really, really like, and just hoping that a receiver is available. And it does look like we'll get a receiver. In fact, we're going to get our choice of Michael Gallup and Terry McLaurin. This is a really tough choice, and I don't know exactly what to do. So I do have Terry McLaurin ranked higher, barely. They're in the same tier. So of course, I'm going to go with Terry McLaurin. But same thing with our first round pick. If you want to go with someone else like Michael Gallup, I think you can for sure do it. But I do like Terry McLaurin a little more. Obviously, his role is a little more secured than Michael Gallup's is. But if you want to take Michael Gallup, absolutely go for it. By the way, my last video actually was an entire video on how Michael Gallup is an incredible sleeper. It's episode one of the series that I just started on my channel, which is called Wide Receiver ADPs that make absolutely no sense. So it is an incredibly in-depth video on exactly how Michael Gallup is a really, really big sleeper in fantasy football for 2020. I really, really like it. When you guys are done with this video, I do highly suggest that you check out that video. It's one of my favorite videos that I've put on this channel. So definitely go check that out. But I do have Terry McLaurin ranked higher than him. And just a little hint, Terry McLaurin is going to be on that series wide receiver ADPs that make absolutely no sense. So since Terry McLaurin is going to be in that series and I have him ranked a little higher than Michael Gallup, I am going to take Terry McLaurin ahead of Gallup with this pick. But take Michael Gallup and I'm not going to complain. You can do that for sure. So Raheem Mostert goes, Gallup goes, two tight ends in a row go. Waller and Evan Ingram. Not a fan of taking Evan Ingram, really, because his injury history is very, very concerning. Besides that, like I said, I do think that Juju and DJ Moore and Odell Beckham, there is a little glitch going on. I do think that they are supposed to be ranked higher than they currently are. Other than that, Todd Gurley goes. I also think that he's supposed to be ranked a little higher than him, a little higher than he is right now but I would not even touch Todd Gurley even here because I'd rather have Darius Geis to be quite honest. I really, really like Darius Geis. So yeah, looking at the other guys here at wide receiver, I like Tyler Boyd, not as much in PPR scoring, but still, I do like him. Cortland Sutton is a very interesting standard play. He has a lot of potential, but at the same time, has a huge risk involved. I think he's really, really talented, and I actually think that his quarterback, Drew Locke, is very good, and I think that he's gonna do really, really good on this team. My only concern is that there's a lot of competition on this team, and I'm not sure how many targets he's gonna have. Now, he's not a PPR machine, necessarily. He doesn't get a ton of catches. He's more of a yardage guy, but still, I'm not sure how many yards he's going to get. Not sure how many red zone opportunities he's going to get. I would be more comfortable with Tyler Boyd or even risking it with Will Fuller. Looking at running back, Sonny Michelle, Jonathan Taylor, Ronald Jones. I'm a decent fan of Jonathan Taylor and Ronald Jones just being safe players, which at this point at running back is kind of what we need because we have certainly taken some riskier players with Geis and with Eckler. So I think that Taylor or Ronald Jones would be a good bet, but I can probably wait until my next pick for that. So at wide receiver, for me at this point, well, looking at who else is available, John Brown, I really, really like him, especially in standard. I like him more than Tyler Boyd. So for me, it's tough. I don't know if I necessarily want to wait until my 10th round pick because there's a good chance that he's going to be taken. But I know that he won't be taken by my 9th round pick. So I think I'm going to wait for him there. And first, let's take a look at tight end. No one who I really, really like there. So we're just going to go back at running back. And it's really between Jonathan Taylor and Ronald Jones. You could go either way here. I really believe so. 
I do feel a little safer with Jonathan Taylor. I think Ronald Jones is a little riskier, but has a much higher chance of being a featured back than Jonathan Taylor. But Jonathan Taylor is a little safer. I think he definitely has a more secure role just because they drafted him, and I think he's incredibly talented. So, yes, he's going to split carries, but he's pretty much a lock to get double-digit touches every single week, at least on a per-game basis. So I'm going to go with Jonathan Taylor here. If you want to go with Ronald Jones, go for it. I don't see a problem with it at all. Now, since our last pick... Tyler Boyd, Will Fuller, Cortland Sutton all go. And then Sonny Michelle goes. I don't really love Sonny Michelle. I'd rather have Ronald Jones. Yes, they drafted Keyshawn Vaughn, but he's very overrated. He wasn't great in college. His numbers were heavily inflated by a bunch of out-of-conference teams who were pretty bad. So don't be fooled by Keyshawn Vaughn's college numbers. They were very, very inflated. I'd much rather have Ronald Jones, who I think is easily going to beat out Keyshawn Vaughn than Sony Michelle, who has a lot of competition. And Ronald Jones is available, but we already have three starting running backs in our roster, along with Darius Geis and Jonathan Taylor. Only three wide receivers. So even though receivers are less important, my receivers aren't as good as my running backs. And we don't have as many of them. So let's take another look at receiver. Edelman, I really like him in PPR, but in standard, it's, it's a little different. He only averages between 10 to 11 and a half yards per reception every single season. So he's more of a receptions guy. Marvin Jones, really like him, like his yardage and his touchdown upside. He was on fire when Matthew Stafford was there at the beginning of last season for pretty much the first half of last season. And Marvin Jones's numbers with Kenny Galladay when they're both playing with Matthew Stafford is really, really impressive he almost outscores Kenny Galladay. So it's very close, but you can get Marvin Jones in the ninth and 10th round. Whereas with Kenny Galladay, you have to spend a second or third round pick on him. So give me Marvin Jones all day. So now Edelman, Kirk, then a bunch of running backs go with Lindsey, Ronald Jones, Damian Williams, Tevin Coleman, Matt Breida, and DeAndre Swift. Austin Hooper and McCole Hardman go in the mix there. Then John Brown, Mike Williams, Rashad Penny, who tore his ACL last season, so I'm not a fan of him now. Not to mention they do have Carlos Hyde on a one-year contract because they know that Rashad Penny is not going to be that valuable this upcoming season, so stay away from Rashad Penny. Then Sterling Shepard goes. Looking at receiver, Darius Slayton is there, who I really, really like. I moved Marvin Jones ahead of Darius Slayton's tier. But I still do think that Darius Slayton has a lot of potential for sure. CeeDee Lamb's also there, who is a very interesting option. We don't really know how he's going to do, but there is some potential with him right there. Even though rookies don't traditionally do that great, I do think that CeeDee Lamb is a phenomenal talent. At running back, Cam Akers and J.K. Dobbins are both there. I think that Cam Akers isn't as good of a back as... J.K. Dobbins is. I think that J.K. Dobbins is a really, really good running back, but Cam Akers has much less competition. J.K. Dobbins has a lot more competition, but the Ravens do run it some more. But I think that I can certainly wait on running back because there's not a great chance that one of those two get taken. And if they do, I could always take Alexander Madison, who maybe should have went earlier, but I can't say this about every player, so I am just going to leave Alexander Madison there free to take if I do want to take him. So we're going to take another look at wide receiver, and between Darius Slayton and CeeDee Lamb, it is pretty tough. You could go either way with that, and let's take another look at the other running backs. Not anyone who really caught my eye there, so it is pretty tough. Darius Slayton and CeeDee Lamb are both good, both in their respective positions in their offense. But I just think that Darius Slayton is on what should be an incredibly pass-heavy team, even though their passing game might not be as good as the Cowboys' is, is. Obviously, the Cowboys are a good team, and if they get off to an early lead, even though Mike McCarthy is there, obviously... They will still run it, probably, if they get off to a really early lead. 
but the Giants probably will not be getting off to many early leads. And Daniel Jones just loves to throw it. So I am going to take Darius Slayton with this pick. But if you want to take CeeDee Lamb, honestly, go for it. No problems there. Then Gronk goes. Drew Brees and Carson Wentz both go. And Henderson also goes. Not a fan of taking him over a guy like Cam Akers, who should be the starting running back on this roster. Obviously, I do like J.K. Dobbins more than Cam Akers, but I think that Cam Akers has an easier path to finishing as a high-end RB2 or even an RB1 in fantasy football. Not saying that it's going to happen, but I do think that he has an easier path to do so. So for that reason, I am going to take Cam Akers. Obviously, you could take Alexander Madison over Cam Akers, but I do think that Alexander Madison was already supposed to go. These ADPs and rankings are just a little off, so I'm going to be fair and not even take Alexander Madison. I'm going to take Cam Akers here, so I'm happy with him. Let's go with Cam Akers. All right, so since our last pick, just to recap really quick, Noah Fant, Daniel Jones, Baker Mayfield, J.K. Dobbins, who I do like a lot, Latavius Murray, James White, Emmanuel Sanders, O.J. Howard, Jared Cook, Deontay Johnson, the guy who is receiving a lot of hype on Twitter, Alshon Jeffrey, Sammy Watkins, New England defense is the first one to go, and then Alexander Madison right before us. So let's take one last quick look at our roster. Our starting roster, Kamara and Chris Carson, love that right there. Then Eckler in our flex. I really like that. I think that our running backs are very, very, very strong. DK Metcalf and Calvin Ridley, I think that is really, really good. Not as good as our running backs, but I think that it is a very good receiving core. Then we also have McLaurin, Marvin Jones, and Slayton to back up those starting two receivers. I really like that. And then Darius Geis, Jonathan Taylor, and Cam Makers, a good mix of a really, really safe player in Jonathan Taylor and a pretty risky player in Darius Geis and then a combination between the two with Cam Akers. So now we're just looking at quarterback and tight end at this point and Goddard and Higby are the two guys who I really like here. Hayden Hurst too, but once again, I do think that this is a little another, I don't necessarily want to call it glitch, but just really, really outdated rankings. Hayden Hurst should have gone, so I'm just going to ignore him. Goddard and Higby, I like both of them for sure, but Higby does have, I would say, more touchdown potential just because he is easily the best red zone threat on this offense, at least looking at size and height and everything. Goddard does have to compete with Zach Ertz for touchdowns, and Miles Sanders is also there who should get a decent amount of touchdowns. And obviously, you know, in the draft, they did address the wide receiver position, and they're just going to have a little more competition for red zone targets than the Rams will. So Tyler Higby has a pretty good chance of nearing 10 touchdowns. And that quarterback, Stafford's there, but Brady's still there. So I think that I should be able to get a quarterback for sure with our next pick. Not quite sure Higby's going to be there with our next pick. So for that reason... We're going to go with Tyler Higby there. Then CeeDee Lamb goes. He fell a lot. I really like that pick right there. Two defenses go, 49ers and Buffalo. And then Robbie Anderson goes. So now it's our pick. And definitely not going to take Kirk Cousins, especially now with Stephon Diggs gone. They're going to run the ball, even if Dalvin Cook holds out. Alexander Madison is good, and they are not afraid to give him the ball. Now it's just between Tom Brady and Stafford for me. You could go either way. It's really up to you. I do think that, obviously, Stafford is a much more higher volume passer than Brady, typically. But now that Brady is on the Buccaneers' offense, and he has a ton of talent there, I do think that Brady has a lot of potential in that offense. So I am going to go with Brady. You know, many people would call him the GOAT. And I'm not necessarily going to say that he's the GOAT. I'm not going to say that he is. I'm not going to say that he's not. But obviously, he's really, really good. And we'll be able to adapt to a very, very good Bruce Arians offense. So we're going to go with Tom Brady here. After him, Matthew Stafford goes right after him. I think that's a good pick also. 
Jordan Howard, Baltimore defense, Kirk Cousins, Jared Goff, a lot of quarterbacks going now, and defenses as we see the Baltimore Ravens division rival go, Pittsburgh Steelers, then Golden Tate, Justin Tucker, Harrison Butker, Jerry Judy, LA Rams defense, Zerline and Will Lutz go back to back, Chicago Bears defense, and now it is our pick. All we need is a defense and a kicker. I think defenses are a little easier to predict than kickers. So looking at the defenses available, the Packers are there, but they don't have the best division for a defense. Vikings are a solid offense. Lions are a very good offense, gonna be underrated, don't have much of a defense, so the Lions and Packers should be in some shootouts. And the Bears, obviously, not a great offense, but we'll see what Mitch Trubisky can do, assuming he actually starts, which is in question at this point. The Chargers play in a better division for a defense. The Broncos are going to be a slower-paced team, I would think, at least on offense. And same with the Raiders. Chiefs, obviously, not a great opponent at all. But for me, I would go with the Chargers defense here. Plus, I think that they have a better defensive roster than the Packers. That's just my opinion. You can go either way with that. But that is what I think. Gould and Fairbairn both go. Nikhil Harry goes, who I really, really like as a sleeper. Same with Dallas Goddard. Now it's just time for us to take our kicker. And it's between Zane Gonzalez, Young Hoku, and Matt Prater at this point. But Young Hoku finished out the season really, really strong. And this offense is very, very fast-paced. And I think that they're going to be a good offense and kick a lot of field goals for sure. So we're going to go with Young Hoku right here. And then to finish off the draft, Zane Gonzalez, Tyra Williams, Keyshawn Vaughn falls a lot later than he normally goes. But still, I don't really like Keyshawn Vaughn that much. But honestly, in the 15th round, you can't really go wrong there. Then Dan Bailey, Mike Gusecki, who I like a lot. Jimmy G goes, who I also like a lot, if Debo Samuel starts the season healthy. And then Packers defense is Mr. Irrelevant in this draft, although they're not completely an irrelevant defense. They're actually all right in fantasy football. So let's take one last look at our roster. To start out, Tom Brady at quarterback. I think he's pretty average for fantasy football. Not going to hurt my team at all. Kamara and Chris Carson, one of the best, if not the best, running back duos in fantasy football in this draft here. DK Metcalf and Calvin Ridley as our wide receivers. They'll get the job done. I really think that Calvin Ridley can be a wide receiver one. And same with DK Metcalf. So that is really, really good. Higby, really like him. I think he is a borderline top five tight end this season. I could easily see him being a top five tight end for sure. I normally do go with a backup tight end just because I think that guys like Goddard and Noah Fant are really, really good as backups. Although Fant sometimes is a starter, but you get my point. Guys like Fant, Goddard, Hawkinson, Jacecki all have a lot of potential, but the only reason why I didn't take a backup tight end here is because it's a 10-team league, so there is just so many of those guys available on the waiver wire, so no need to take any bench tight ends there. Then kicker, Young Hoku, defense, chargers, Nothing too special there. Darius Geis as someone who could be an RB1, but could bust. But in the late sixth round, what do you really expect? You know, there's no such thing as a safe player who still has a lot of upside when you get into the fifth and sixth round. McLaurin, love that pick right there. Really, really good player who should have more chemistry with Dwayne Haskins this season. They both went to Ohio State, so they already have that chemistry there. Jonathan Taylor, very safe player, secured role just because he's so talented, and obviously the Colts used a fairly high draft pick on him. Marvin Jones, love him, great offense, not going to get wide receiver one coverage, because obviously Kenny Galladay is there, who is going to attract the best cornerback on the opposing team, but Marvin Jones is still really, really talented. Darius Slayton, I do think that Sterling Shepard could be the wide receiver one on this team, but Darius Slayton does have a little more potential, I think. If Sterling Shepard is the wide receiver one on this team, I doubt that he can be anything higher than a low wide receiver two for fantasy football. But Darius Slayton could be a solid wide receiver two for sure, possibly becoming a top 15 fantasy football wide receiver if he becomes the wide receiver one on that team, on that New York Giants team. And then Cam Akers as our last bench player, really happy with that. He has a pretty clear path to being a featured back here. It won't necessarily happen, but he is a rookie, and rookie running backs 
do usually perform pretty well. And this offense is something that I'm excited about for sure. I think that there's a lot of targets to go around, a lot of carries to go around. And the Rams made a pretty good season with Todd Gurley in 2019, even though Gurley was not that efficient and had an 80-year-old knee. So I think Cam Akers should have a really good season. That was it, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to see any specific video, whether it be a breakdown on a player, a breakdown on two players, one player versus another player, who's better, whether you want it to be exactly a 14-team half PPR super flex draft from the eighth overall position, whatever it is, let me know. And obviously, whenever I do those mock draft videos that you guys request, not only the mock draft videos, actually, any video, if you request you know, a breakdown on Dallas Goddard, for example, no matter what it is, whatever video you guys ask for, once I put it out, I will give a quick shout out to anyone who requested for that video. So you not only get the video that you want, but you also get a little shout out, which I think is pretty cool. So if you guys don't already follow me on Twitter, definitely go follow me there. I put out a lot of content over there. And if you're not subscribed, definitely subscribe here because I put out daily content. At least I try to make it daily. Some days I'll actually put out two videos, but as the season gets closer, I'll definitely try to put out even more content as long as that is possible, of course. And if you enjoyed, please drop a like. It really does help me because I'm just a small YouTuber and really trying to grow here. And in the comments below, what I want you guys to do is let me know how you think I did in this draft. What pick do you think you would have done something differently? For example, would you have went with maybe Dallas Goddard instead of Tyler Higbee with my 12th round pick? Would you have went with maybe Jared Cook? What would you have done differently with any of my picks? Or do you think that I did really good overall and you wouldn't really change much of anything at all? But yeah, guys, let me know in the comments below what picks you think I should have went with someone else. I'm curious to hear your guys' opinions on some of these players because obviously I have mine and you guys are hearing my opinions, but I want to hear your guys' opinions so it's not just one-sided. So let me know in the comments below. And once again, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. really helps me out and it helps you guys out because you're going to get more content in your subscriber page on YouTube, whatever. And also, please hit that like button because like I said, it really does help. It helps get my content out there. And if you guys enjoyed it, then I'm sure other people would enjoy it, which is why if you know someone who might enjoy this video, go share it to them, help them out, you know, help them out. It'll give them some advice for this upcoming fantasy football season. And it also helps me out a little because it gets my content out there for other people in their suggested feed page, whatever you want to call it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Peace.